So when I was in ninth grade, I had a guy that used to bully me, and his name was Otis. And so that's, a, that's the name of my story, Otis. So yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> now, Otis was like, Otis was, we were both in ninth grade, but Otis wasn't like your average ninth grader. He was about 17 years old. <laughs> about, yeah. About six feet tall and about 250 pounds. And so, you know, he bullied me, and which obviously is clear bullying, because like, I looked exactly the same in high school except for maybe like 20 pounds lighter. And I don't know if y'all know this, I'm not really the most intimidating looking black guy in the world. I'm like kind of, I'm the black guy that most people go to when they want directions and shit. I'm that guy. I'm that guy. I'm friendly neighborhood black guy and I, I, I own it. And that's cool. It works for me. It works for me. But yeah, man, but, um, but Otis, man, Otis just looked hard. He was just a real, like, aggressively unattractive motherfucker. He was like, he was just a really, like, you, you know, he looked just like Biggie Smalls, like that rapper. He looked just like that. He looked like, if you ever see a movie where they have a, a, a villain in a, in a Western and they like try to strike the match off his face, you could do that shit with Otis. Yeah, he, he looked hard as shit. And so, you know, every day in study hall, he did something to like just, just basically remind me that I'm his bitch every single day. And like, like I would just sit down in the seat. He's like, you're in my seat. I'm like, what do you mean? There's a ton of seats. He's like, no, that's my seat, motherfucker. Get, pretty boy, get your ass up and go over there. And I was like, huh? He's like, yeah, get your little sexy ass up and go over there. And I was like, whoa. So I was like, I didn't know what scared me more, the fact that Otis was threatening me or the fact that like, it sounded like a prison rape might happen. Cause you know what? But I got my ass up and went across the room because I wasn't trying to test him, so, you know. But um, I told my dad about this problem. And my dad was old school. Like, he grew up, like, he grew up during the Civil Rights Movement and stuff. So, you know, he had, he had to be tough. You know, he was, he, was, he was rugged. Like, you know, literally, when my dad was in high school, like, he wasn't even black yet. He was, he was a Negro at that time. Like, he, he lived through every name change we've had as a people. So, like, so, so I'm just saying, the man was rough. He was rugged. He had to be. He had to be. He had to be. And so... Like, I told him about this problem, and my dad, you know, of course, he approached it old school style. He was like, son, you got to fight that man. You got to stand up for your rights. You got to fight that man. If you, don't, if you don't fight that man, when you come home from school, you got to fight me. <laughs> so I looked at my dad, and I was like, well, dad, with, with all due respect, bring it, bitch. <laughs> um, I'm just saying, Otis was huge, so yeah. <laughs> so let me just say this. My dad is a lot quicker than he looks, and the sleeper holes actually... Hurt, so yeah, so I'm just going, that, that's a lesson I learned from that, but yeah, so, you know, we just never talked about the whole Otis thing after, you know, our little run-in, but um, I went to school the next day, the very next day, and it's one of the greatest things that ever happened. I was walking down the hallway, and a senior girl, this really beautiful senior named Lily, came up and started talking to me, and it was like, it was amazing, because, you know, she just started running her fingers through my little 90s, 90s fade, and <laughs> touching my shoulders, and I was like, wow, this is so great, this is a girl, like, a senior and named after a flower and she's flirting with me. This is so great. Oh shit, this is the greatest day of my ninth grade life. So I was like, oh, I felt, I felt incredible. But Otis was lurking in the background. He just came, <laughs> so he came behind me and like slapped me right across the back of my head. And, and I don't know if y'all are familiar with like fades from the nineties, that haircut. It's basically skin that just fades into hair. So it was, my whole neck was exposed. So he slapped the shit out of the back of my neck. It like resonated, it sounded like a gunshot almost. But yeah, so he slapped me real hard. I was embarrassed and I was angry and that's when that was the final straw for me. I literally just turned around in the hallway, forgot Otis was like twice my size. I was like, man, fuck this Otis. We are gonna fight and we're gonna end this shit today. This shit ends today. No, fuck you. We're fighting right now. And then so, so this guy named Nate was in the hallway and he says, hey, if you're gonna fight, go in a shop class. I was like, what's, what's shop class got to do with it? And he said, if you go to shop class, you won't get in trouble. I was like, fuck it, let's go to shop class. And so, you know, cause I'm that man. So we roll in the shop class and Somehow, by the, between walking down the hallway and getting to shop class, half the school has followed me and arrived in shop class. That shit looked like Fight Club. I was like, well, what is, I was like, how did this happen? And so that's when the reality of the situation set in. I was like, oh, I'm about to fight somebody twice my size in front of the entire school. This might not end well. And so I looked over and I saw the office where the shop teacher was. And he was in his office. I was like, yes, this is cool. This is perfect. I might not have to fight. But he looked out of his office window and he saw me. He looked at me. Then he looked at Otis. And he looked back at me and just did this shit. Like, <laughs> and closed his blinds. I was like, fuck, I'm going to die. Oh, shit. Oh, somebody help me. <laughs> so, so I just started thinking. I was thinking. I was like, well, you know what? These people saw me, like, breaking bad in the hallway. I've got to keep this shit going. i got to, like, keep the, you know, I, I can't bitch up now. i got to, like, give them a show. If I get whooped, at least it look good a, a, along the way, you know. So I just kept going with it. I, I, got, I took it to the streets. Like, fuck you. I'm going to kick your ass, Otis. I'm going to kick your ass. You can't. You don't want it. You don't want it. So I started, like. Posing, doing Hulk Hogan shit, like, you know. 
Yeah, it was it was crazy. So Otis was just looking at me like I was crazy. But um, and I don't know. I made the mistake of taking my eye off of Otis, and he punched me right in the back of my head. And um, I didn't go down, but he did leave a knot. It felt like my head was growing another fucking head behind me. Though so he left the knot back there, and so I turned around. I was even more mad at this point, and I just started swinging on him. I started pounding him like Rocky in the side of beef, like ah 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 ah. So it looked real good to like the crowd. But Otis knows, and I know that none of those punches actually hurt. Like, I might have, I might have tickled him a little bit. I might have tickled him, but I don't know, man. It, it looked good enough to the crowd. So, like, you know, like my friends on the basketball team broke up the fight, and you know, basically from that point forward, I didn't have to fight again in high school, which was, which was kind of awesome. But um, I will say this: what I left with was, I was like, I might have left with a mild concussion <laughs> and some really ridiculous memories, but I left with my dignity. Damn it! So, um, uh, it was a win. Thank you, my name is Leon. That was my story.